Display campaigns are significantly underused by Google advertisers, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use display campaigns the right way and how to get the most out of them. So when most people start advertising on Google, they start with the search network. And that's what I'd recommend as well. That makes sense because search is really easy to understand. It's less likely that you're going to run into issues. There's intent there that helps you in terms of getting those people to convert. So I think search is the right place to start for Google advertisers. And then once they get familiar with the search network, they usually look to expand into display, but they do so with remarketing only. Now, of course you want to use a display network for remarketing. Why not take the people that have already interacted with your business and make sure that they see your ads again and again and again. But where a lot of Google advertisers stop is they only use the display network for remarketing. And I think that's a mistake. I think that's a missed opportunity. I think you can also use display campaigns. You can also use the display network for discovery. You can put your ads in front of cold audiences people who haven't interacted with your business before there, and there's a lot of opportunity that comes from doing so. So firstly, the display network is way cheaper than search or shopping. You're gonna pay a lot less per click, a lot less on an impression basis, and that can be really beneficial, particularly for certain types of businesses. Let's say, for example, you advertise low value items. You're an e-commerce business, you're most of the products that you sell are you know, 15, 20, $30, something like that. You might see your best results from the display network, even advertising to cold audiences because your cost per click is going to be that much cheaper there than it is through search, shopping, etc. When you target cold audiences through the display network, as well as warm audiences, of course, you also get to tap into a much larger potential target market. Now, it's known marketing wisdom at this point that only a small percentage of your target market is actively searching for the products and services that you offer. And different numbers are used, but the, the most common one used is 10%. So of your total market, only 10% are active searching for product service a solution to their problem the other 90% are potential customers of yours but they aren't actively searching so by advertising to cold audiences on the display network one of the the main advantages you get is you get to tap into some of those 90% that's going to potentially make your Google ad campaigns way more successful way more scalable and if I give you an example to sort of help explain that let's say for example you're a roofer and you advertise to people in your local area because you provide roofing services now if you only advertise on the search network work on Google. You're only putting ads in front of people that are actively searching. You're probably going to be advertising only to the people that are, they have a, a roofing problem that they're aware of, that they know is probably relatively urgent. They need to take action they need to get it sorted now. But there are lots more people that will see an ad for a roofer pop up and go, oh yeah, we do have a bit of a problem. I think we might have a slight leak. We should get someone out to come and do a, a free survey. Let's say that's the introductory offer, a, a free survey for this roofer. We should get someone out to come and have a look at that. That would be a good idea. Yeah, our roof is looking a little bit tired. Maybe we should get someone around to quote to, to do a whole new roof for us to, to replace the whole thing. Or I don't like the way it looks. There's loads more people in that bucket than the ones that are actively searching because all of a sudden there's an issue, there's been a bit of damage or a leak or something like that, and they're looking to take action. So um, so that's hopefully an example that helps to explain that there are way more people in that not searching um, bucket than there are in the searching bucket with the display network. It's one of the best ways to tap into those people. In a second, I'm going to go into more detail around around how to set up display campaigns and, and how you should approach them and things like that. Before I do, I just want to quickly let you know about our done for you Google advertising services. So my company can create, manage and optimize your Google ad campaigns for you. We can take that workload off your hands and almost certainly help you get much better results. If you're interested, there's a link in the video description below. Just click on that, go ahead and book a free, no obligation call with one of my team members to find out more. And hopefully we get a chance to work together. Now, the major reason why display campaigns are underused by Google advertisers is because Google advertisers often struggle with the display network. They don't really know how to approach it. Most Google advertisers, as I've already said, start with search and they sort of become used to advertising to people that have that intent, that are actively searching. So their ad copy, even their landing pages, everything sort of gets customized for those people. And it's much easier person for person to convince someone to convert if they are actively searching and they have that intent than if they're not. Display is interruption advertising. Hey parents, tired of those out of control kids. And it's much more difficult to get those people to convert. Now, of course, that is factored into the price. And that's why the display network is way cheaper. That's why you'll get way cheaper impressions, way cheaper um, clicks and, and all that sort of stuff. Now, as I'm sure some of you watching this video are already aware, I have 
a meta ads background, Facebook advertising background, right? And that is all interruption advertising. That functions very much like the display network. And there, there are a lot of similarities there and you need to approach campaigns on the display network and in Facebook and Instagram because they, they very are, are a similar um, buying process for your potential customers, a similar experience where they're doing something else online and then they're being interrupted with an ad as opposed to actively searching like on the search network. You need to do things differently to search. So let's cover some of those points. I think that's where a lot of Google advertisers go wrong is they're used to search and they don't adjust things properly for the display network. So when it comes to the display network, the single most important thing to focus on is the offer. That has to be as irresistible as possible. Something that pops up that people go, wow, that's a great offer. I really want that. That could be a discount. That could be some sort of guarantee if you're offering a service. Look, we guarantee to get you X, Y, Z results. There's all sorts of different ways that you can make an offer really appealing, but just have a look at what your introductory offer is and think, is that better than what the competition are offering? Or can I change it to make it better than what the competition are offering? Is it something that's going to stop people in their tracks? It's going to distract them away from the, what they're otherwise doing and go, wow, I really want that. Going back to the roofing example, that could be a free survey. Sure, there are lots of roofing companies that charge for service, but you could offer a free survey. If you find that there's a problem or something that could be done, you can then recommend your service and get them to go on um, in that way. For all sorts of products, you can bundle products together. You can offer big discounts. You can offer a superior product to, to other um, competitors. As I said, there's lots of different ways to make an offer really appealing and really strong, but that is the single most important thing when it comes to interruption advertising is focusing on the offer. After that, it's going to be the visual. A lot of Google advertisers come to the display network, they worry about like who we're going to put the ads in front of and trying to get that all right because it, obviously it's quite different to a search network and they focus on the settings within the ad campaign. And these things are important, but it's not as important as A, the offer, and then B, the ad creative itself. What are people actually going to see? Does that really stand out? Does that grab people's attention? Is it visually appealing? Does it look professional? Does it convey some of the important information that you wanted to convey? Things like what are the main benefits it's associated with your product or service. Is that right there, easily understandable and consumable within the ad creative? These are the two areas that you want to focus on, way more than the stuff that is sort of behind the curtain, as it were, the things that your potential customers don't see all around uh, targeting and audiences and campaign settings and stuff like that within your, your Google Ad account. Those are the two things to put your time, focus, and if you have the budget, budget on. So one of the best tips I have for Google advertisers that are venturing from the search network over to the display network is to hire professionals to do that creative element, to create images, videos, things like that, and do so um, in, in a really professional, visually appealing way that helps you stand out and presents your brand how you want it to be presented. I think a lot of Google advertisers naturally are more on the analytical side of marketing. They like the data, they like um, the breakdown of the keywords and, and all those sort of um, quite mathsy analytical elements. And then the creative side, the visual side doesn't necessarily come naturally. I would fall into this category. You know, I started Google advertising back in 2009 and I very much started with that in marketing. And even though I've gone into other platforms that are more visual, I like the display network and things like that. I try and make it as analytical as possible and get other people to handle the creative, the graphic design, the video editing side of things. And that's something I'd recommend a lot of Google advertisers do if you have the budget. I think if you're going to be going into display network, that part has to be really good. Good. And if you don't have the capability yourself, get someone on your team or hire someone temporarily at least who can do that. Now, there are a few different ways you can run display campaigns within your Google Ad account. Obviously, you can create a specific display campaign, but by far the easiest way to take advantage of Google's display network is to use a performance max campaign. I've created a full step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to set up performance max campaigns and how to get the most out of them in this video here. We are using performance max more and more. It's a campaign type that incorporates all the Google Ad networks is performing really well. I'd strongly recommend you go ahead and check this out.